You know, I can't help but notice that many people bemoan the modern gaming industry filled with remakes and sequels and remasters and re-sequels. To be completely honest with you, I don't have a huge problem with this because there's still a lot of games that come out like every day. It just so happens that a lot of the smaller titles fall through the cracks. For a while now, I've wanted to cover some of these games, maybe make it a regular thing if anybody cares, and if not, eh, you, you know. So let's get into it. One such title that's been on my mind for a while, released about a year ago, Cyberhook, developed by Blazing Stick, is a first-person platforming speedrunning title. That might sound like a mouthful, but it's actually become a relatively popular genre in the past few years. So what makes this game, Cyberhook, different? Well, it's, it's not really the cyber part. We got a lot of those already. It's the hook. You get a grappling hook which I love in my games. A lot of people love these, but this one's special. Rather than simply point, shoot, and fly over in a linear path, this hook functions more like Spider-Man webs. It's actually more so than even the Spider-Man games. I mean, you gotta account for your speed while you're running, and the angle you shoot, and the direction you're facing, and the moment you let go. And there's some clever rope physics along the way. And see, it's still a grappling hook, so you still get to gain speed towards whatever object you're, you know, grabbing, you're hooking. Besides this, you have wall running, a double jump, a shooty gun finger, and the ability to slow down time. There is a limit to how much you can slow down time, and you kind of don't want to do it too much, because it, you know, the, it doesn't stop the timer. But it can also allow you to grab onto ledges further away than if you didn't use it, so it's kind of important. The game itself is split into several worlds with quite a few levels. I, I don't know the exact number, I did not count, but it's a lot. There is a story of sorts, it's more or less save the princess, except instead, you, you gotta go home? You have to go home because you're stuck in Cyberhook world with this robot. Sadly, the ending of the game is based around the concept that 10,000 people have completed the game and then something will happen. And I don't know if 10,000 people beat this game. I think there's DLC coming out, so right, maybe. So what about these actual levels? They're pretty well designed, honestly. And they consist of four distinct elements. You got the blue blocks, and they're nice, and you can hook onto them. And you can run on the walls, and it's a safe, it's a safe, nice blue block. You got the yellow blocks, which you can't hook onto, but you can wall run. Purple blocks will kill you if you touch them, but you can hook onto them. And red blocks will kill you, and you can't hook onto them. There is one more hazard, which is these robots, and... They'll shoot you, and you either gotta outrun them or you, you shoot them first. But nah, it's it's fine, it's tame, and it's only in a few levels, so if you really don't like it, you know. Obviously, the main draw of this game is that hook. That core hooking mechanic. And it works. Well, it, it works well. Maintaining momentum requires both decent accuracy and a good understanding of angles. Maintaining that speed is important. If you double jump while you're going up, you're gonna lose speed, so most of the time you just want to have the hook do all the work. The sprinting is fast and you can build up speed pretty quickly, but not as much as the hook, so yeah. By the end of the game, all of this needs to be done with pretty expert precision, or at least mildly expert precision. It's not the hardest game out there, that's not what I'm saying, but on these three-star challenges by the end, it's, it's pretty tough. It's been a while since I played this game last before getting all this footage, so yeah, I'm not setting any world records here. These kind of games always draw me in because I like the idea of just having a rope in a game. Just a simple rope, then you attach it to something, and you swing. A lot of games have this, but most give you a pretty big handicap. I mean, stuff like that. Is that, is that really a, a grappling hook? Is that really a web slinging? Cyber hook doesn't go all the way. I mean, there's still some elements such as lower overall gravity in the world that makes it a bit easier. But the difference in speed you can build up by doing everything just right, it, it's, it's worth it. It's pretty good. It makes you feel like a big... Swinging monkey. That's all I want to be. <laughs> Something that's pretty cool are these transparent blocks. If you hook onto them, you can pass through them and build up as much speed as you want. 
You can even fly out of bounds, which honestly, I had no idea you could do that after a hundred hours of playing this game. I have to assume these were intended for this use because there's a lot of levels that if you aim just right, you can just skip to the end. On the shorter tracks, I mean, you're better off just trying to do it regularly because it takes a while to build up that speed. After getting back into the game after so long, it felt weird to play at first because by default you have to press spacebar to detach your hook. And luckily these can all be turned off in a dedicated speed running options menu. You can just make it just a button press. Something I gotta bring up here is the overall vibe. Yeah, this is your synth wave, retro wave, y you get the point. Yeah, I, I can't say this is the best decision in my mind because there is so many many games that do that. I mean, the whole resurgence of the 80s thing kind of came and went almost 10 years ago now. This doesn't really affect the game itself, but it certainly affects how it appears, I think, to other people. Because yeah, at first glance, it just seems like, oh, it's another synthwave retrowave 80s throwback. Visually, most of the game is, I mean, it's cubes. It does what it needs to do. The background of each level is uh, this art, which, you know, I'd like like if that was not there in every single level, but whatever. It seems like in the DLC they're changing that a bit. The music is, it's fine. You know, it's synthwave, but honestly, most of the time I'm playing these kind of games, I'm not listening to the soundtrack. One element of these titles that always concerns me is the leaderboards. I'm sure you've seen it, especially in indie games, but they tend to get broken really quickly. You have outlandish, impossible times, but here it seems to be working. The only concern I have is apparently there is a patch, and before the patch, a lot of skips were possible that are not possible now. So some of these times might just be you can't do them. There is one final note, uh, and I'm sure it's one a lot of people won't like. This game isn't on Xbox or PlayStation. It's only on the PC, and apparently there's a Switch port. I, I don't know how well that would go over. Personally, I could not imagine playing this game on a controller. That's not to say I wouldn't like to see it happen. I mean, but you know, it's gonna be pretty tough without that without a mouse without a little rat-a-tat-tat -tat. for me these kind of games the ones that have basically no story and are pick up and play built upon the leaderboards and just playing the same level over and over again to do better i can easily sink hours a day into these but this one's special because there's no defined route the most obvious straightforward path to get to the end goal is never the fastest, so it's mostly about experimentation. And when it's these indie titles, you also get the feeling of discovery, because not everything has been found in these games. Especially in the early days, it wouldn't be that uncommon to find some skip that no one else had found on the leaderboards and rise all the way up. Having a hook, going around, swinging through town. That's Cyberhook. Yup.